Welcome, everybody, to StarCraft II Wings of Liberty. Today, we are going to be playing through the Wings of Liberty campaign. I am going to start an entirely new campaign save here. I am setting this up because I have a friend that really wants to see how I play StarCraft 2. He wants to get a few ideas of how to play the game and how to enjoy himself. Because uh, he's finding this particular RTS to be a bit difficult to adjust to. And honestly, I could definitely see why. It can easily be a tough game to adjust to if you're not prepared for it. So you may as well sit back and relax because we're going to be playing on hard mode. Uh, I don't play Brutal because Brutal just feels like adding extra damage bonuses to the enemies in order to make them harder just feels like a lazy form of difficulty to me. I don't really like this difficulty and I don't really approve of that kind of difficulty design. I feel like difficulty should come from the enemy AI being smarter, the levels perhaps being more intricately designed in certain ways. I don't feel like just adding more damage makes the game harder in a way that feels fair and balanced. So I tend to not touch Brutal. I usually play through this game on normal. On normal, though, I have a tendency to tear this game to pieces. I'm going to try and complete the whole campaign on hard mode. So we're going to see how good my micro and macro skills are going to be. Spartan, my good sir, I hope you're out there watching. This is an amazing opening. Look at that.
And after that amazing intro cutscene, we get sucked straight into Marsara. Station is the center of the main logistics of Mosara. Destroying the living authority here will cripple them for immense salvation throughout the planet. All right, so after that amazing intro, we go ahead and get sucked straight into the very first mission, Liberation Day. This is going to be one of the easiest missions to do in the game. It's very simple, it's very basic. We're also going to get our first Terran unit, the Marine. This is the bread and butter infantry unit. It's basically their core infantry. It's, it's a pretty good unit. It's actually, I think, one of the best units in the Terran arsenal. And here we go. Let's get started. Logistics headquarters in the town of Backwater Station. This has become the hub for all operations on Mosara. The Dominion recently pulled troops out of the city and are now under strain. Are the locals cooperating? The people of Backwater Station are known to be anti Dominion, but they lack weapons and organization. If I can take that headquarters away from Minx, it'll cripple them on this planet. Prep my ship. <laughs> and we're dropped off via this. All right, boys. Let's show the locals they don't need to fear the Dominion. A special ops dropship. That is only ever used for uh, special insertions, like cutscene insertions. It'll despawn, as you just saw. So here's regular Marines. The game will grant us access to various tutorials. You can click on these if you want. Ultimately, they don't really teach you that much that experimenting won't teach you. Uh, occasionally, a hero unit will join your troops on the field of battle. They are stronger than a version of normal units they're associated with. That is actually completely true. Your average Marine starts out with 45 hit points, 0 Terran infantry armor, and 6 damage on their Gauss rifle with 5 range. Jim Rayner has 200 hit points, two base armor, and he does 12 damage with his rifle and has six range. Uh, their weapon attack speed is the same. They can all attack ground units. The trick that you want to be careful of here is that Rayner, because he has longer range than his troops, his troops will actually often get uh, pulled into combat in front of him and take damage before he does if you don't make him lead. All these different doodads around here, they do a really good job of showing you the ambiance of what you're about to be dealing with. So what I just tried to do there was called a, was a special form of micromanagement called stutter stepping by a lot of the community. It basically has you attacking fairly quickly. Commander, 
Destroying the Dominion hullabogs will help incite rebellion against the Dominion. And basically what you do is you move a unit and then that cancels its reload animation. So before he keeps talking, I am going to look at the game speed. And I'm just going to go ahead and max out the game speed. So this is basically what stutter stepping is. You order an attack and then you move the unit and then you order them to attack again. And the time they would normally spend essentially performing their cooldown animation gets cancelled. It can speed up your attack rate if you master that skill. It does take a little bit of work to figure out though. So Rainer you'll notice has already taken some significant damage. We gotta be really careful of these Dominion troops here. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Using F2, you can control your entire army. Shut up. Nobody likes you, Minx. Shut up. Again, Minx, nobody likes you. <clears throat> they basically took all these civilians over here and shot the crap out of them in a shooting range. If you ever wondered why I don't like Minx, you have just discovered why. That and all the crap he does in StarCraft 1. So, what I'm about to do here is another form of micromanagement. I'm going to try and get all my healthy Marines first. We're going to set them up so that they move around all of these obstacles when I order them to attack move. You will notice that I'm picking units that have full health first. This is so that the damaged guns can still be used as an extra buffer to my troops. But they will live longer if they're not the first persons to take damage. Did my best to make sure no civilians died. I think I only lost one. Welcome back, dissident. Welcome back to more of the Madhouse. That's right. That's right, he can. Okay, none of the civilians were lost. Not bad for our first hard mode difficulty mission. Not bad at all. We're actually not doing too bad for what I would like to see. And now for the next cutscene. Frickin' random ass fly.
<laughs> so, Tychus Findley is actually a character from the Expanded Universe books. Primarily from Heaven's Devils and Devil's Do. Welcome to the stream, Glory. It's nice to see you. How you doing today, my good man? And uh, he, uh, specifically the two books that he is from primarily are Heaven's Devils and Devil's Do. Heaven's Devils tells the story of how Jim Rayner got started as a marshal and ended up in that position. And it also explains a lot of his military combat skills. He's an ex-Confederate Marine. Tychus is also uh, explained in those books as his old friend that he meets, if I recall, during his time there. Objects and mission case. You can click on different objects for various interactions. The mission case will start our next mission. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to learn to hate Donnie Vermillion. Uh, but Tychus is essentially a scoundrel and an outlaw <coughs> who uh, who Rainer knew and ended up getting caught by, I believe, Dominion outlaws at the time? Or perhaps, no, no, he was caught by the Confederacy and then he was kept in prison by the Dominion afterwards. Call me curious. Nah, I don't. Then I wouldn't get to do the crap that I get to do in uh, Heart of the Swarm. This looks recent. This your bloom, Jimmy. Folks in these parts are ready to fight back against Max. Guess they just need a little push. You still take this whole revolution thing pretty serious, then. Everyone needs a hobby, Tychus. <laughs> <laughs> My hobby is being a rebel terrorist. Thank you very much, Jim Rayner, for letting us all know that. So we are going to acquire um, the medic unit from this mission. Uh, this is basically going to be your core support healer for virtually all your infantry army needs. It's actually a really good unit, but it's going to start out fairly average. And here in a second, you're going to find out why. Um, yeah, the frame being cut off, I think, has to do with the fact that I have this in full screen and I may just need to adjust the screen at some point. I am sorry for that glory, but it shouldn't cut off anything that's actually necessary for any for uh, the game at all. <laughs> all right. 
So this mission, the Outlaws, is also incredibly easy to beat. It's not really going to rack your brain. It's not going to hurt you to figure out how to play. Uh, it, it's really easy. Okay, and... So, Rainer is completely right about both of these things. What he's wrong about is that we really need more supply, and we should probably be building supply depots first, because our supply cap is very low, and we just... We, 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 need, we need more room for troops. <laughs> so, the way SCVs work, they're the core mining group and building unit for the Terran army. They effectively will make sure that this faction has money and resources coming in. There's only two types of resources you need to collect and a population cap to manage. The two resources you need to collect are minerals from mineral fields and Vespine gas from Vespine geysers. So we're going to prioritize that. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of SCVs on this to mine it. You probably won't need three SCVs to mine that in this mission because there's not much you need gas for besides medics and marines, or medics, excuse me, and, uh, and the tech lab in order to build them. But I'm going to do this just to speed things up. I'm going to try to go for speed as much as possible while playing. That's, that's, going to be, that's always going to be my main goal. Can I, can I screw with my chat room here? It's not letting me mess with my chat. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm going to have to work with my, uh, my chat system a little bit more. Uh, I, will, I will get a hold of you guys as soon as I can. I'm sorry. I may have some issues because I've only got one monitor right now. We can't build an engineering bay, so there's only so much we're actually going to need about uh, w involving things like that. We're going to go ahead and get some more SCVs going. I'm going to drop down another barracks here. And we're going to start cranking out medics. We should get attacked by the Dominion's troops here in a second. Yep. Yep, there we go. And the main reason we won is because we were outnumbering them at this particular point. <clears throat> there we go. Here's the medic. So the one problem with the medic, they do have a level of base armor, but they can't actually attack, you will notice. So medics are going to be more or less just a a extra buffer that keeps your main general purpose infantry alive and moving. I think I only need one more SCV in order to get that on the road. Go ahead and drop down another one of these. All right, let's head out here so we can grab some resources now that we've waited out the attack wave. Grab some resources. So you also have to be careful because on hard mode, the enemy will target your healers if they get too close. Uh, I really should have redirected her to be behind the pack, and I did not do that, and she paid for it. I'm going to go ahead and drop two more barracks over here. Keep him busy. There should be more than enough uh, Marines in order to be able to get through. I don't like how they made these girls sound way more lewd than they used to. <laughs> because. 
does. It just sounds inappropriate. So the reason these these guys are actually kicking the crap out of my guys, you'll notice I actually lost several Marines there. Uh, they were outnumbering me at first. The other reason is that some of those guys are mercenaries, and mercenaries do double damage and have double the durability most of the time. These guys also have an armor upgrade, and mine don't. So we're about to run into another new unit here. Yeah, trust me, dude, I know. The Hellion! This is an anti-light unit that essentially replaced the Vulture. I'm not going to lie to you. I missed the Vulture. My stutter step technique was not working there. I must have been misclicking somehow. You can pretty much just A move into the space once you get past that bunker. That medic really thinks she's something special. Oh jeez, kill that guy. That that was Prometheus Company. <laughs> if I recall correctly, they put a siege tank in here too. You'll notice the SCVs moving to repair and my troops automatically targeting them over everything else. The reason why is because those SCVs will repair those damaged structures. There we go. That's stutter stepping when it works. More or less. Clear. And that's the mission. That's everything to it. Oh. Okay. I might actually need to. Uh... I was trying not to, but I might actually just have to download the app. There we go. That was the Outlaws. Okay. Give me just one moment here, everybody. find my own feet again.
so I can actually properly hook up to my chat this time. So I can actually properly hook up to my chat this time. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to turn the sound off on this actually, but that's not really that big of a deal. Here we go. I swear to God, his actor is so charming in the way he delivers every one of his lines. It's what makes Tyka such a memorably loverable character, despite the fact that he is such an obvious scumbag. That is really weird. Okay. That's strange. Why is that so cut off? Alright, let me take a look at the screen capture so I can adjust that for everybody. Because that should not be happening. Oh! Really? Oh my word. Okay, I think I see what happened here. No, I didn't crop this, at least not on purpose. I think uh, it must have cropped itself somehow. Not realizing that it needed to, uh, to actually expand out, I guess, or something. This is, yeah, this is weird. My... <laughs> Uh, I think this is the first fail that my Streamlabs has ever had. But I can I can fix this. This really isn't the end of the world. Just give me one minute here and I'll have it repaired for you guys. Terribly sorry. I don't know how this happened. Again, this is very, very odd. Okay, now I can just pull that back. And then pull this forward just a bit. Okay, this looks a hell of a lot better. Just need to make sure that I finalize the size of this correctly. There we go. Okay. Yep. I, I, I fixed it. It should, it should be adjusted now. Um, right click on the feature hogger to transform and click to fit the screen. Yeah, I think I just readjusted this. So, uh, does it, does it look any different to you now? Glory. Does this look any different now? Can you actually see the rest of the screen? Okay, thank God. <laughs> the point is for people to be able to actually watch what I'm doing, so if they can't properly see the screen, then I have an issue. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, no, I appreciate you. 
Thank you very much for warning me about that, Gloria. I'm, I'm glad you did not stop trying to get my attention on it because my phone refused to alert me to the texts that you sent. So I wouldn't have known you even you even told me uh, or showed me if you hadn't said something. Yeah, I'm using Streamlabs as well. So that that's that's definitely that explains how you knew what was going on. I've always been a fan of StarCraft. This is a game I got into as a kid, and I've never not been a fan of it now. Oh, man. Even the magistrate here knows you was hiring an odd criminal as he is marshaled. Yeah, same for me, too. All I need now is some viewers, and this will really start to kick up. This my reputation kept things nice and quiet around here. All the time I wore that badge, I never had to shoot anybody. Well, where's the fun in that? <laughs> Where's the fun of that? You know, Tychus, not everybody enjoys shooting people on a regular basis. Can I tell you that, sir? <laughs> All right. So instead of unlocking a unit for this mission, we're going to unlock a structure called the Bunker. This is a core defensive structure that we're going to need for a lot of units and uh, a lot of other things in the game. So units inside Bunker have plus one range to their attacks. Bunkers can also be salvaged. This is true. Bunkers are one of the few structures that you can actually salvage in the game. I've got transport coming to pick us up. All we got to do is sit tight. <clears throat> Detecting a massive concentration of Zerg biosignatures lurking at the abandoned dig site. I should have known it. Damn it. I swear, man, I didn't know nothing about no Zerg. Given their current course, the Zerg will overrun this location within the hour. Damn it. We gotta hold out long enough for distraction. If we man the bunkers and hold those two bridges as long as we can, Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, a lot of people play this game on normal, and you would hardly be different than Seth Allen and a lot of my friends who play this. Start mining, you little jerks. Okay. So they give us a decent number of Marines and a decent number of bases, uh, or base units to start with. I'm going to drop a tech lab on this and a reactor on that. They also give you the engineering base. So you can start researching weapons and armor upgrades. So the first thing you'll want to do is move your infantry around behind this. In this mission, Zero Hour is not a hard defense mission. It's really not. This is actually a fairly easy defense mission. So don't don't feel like this game is going to, you know... Unless you're playing on Brutal, don't feel like this game is out to get you yet. Oh, yeah, I need 50 gas for that. Yeah, he needs gas. Yes, I do. 
So the reason why you want to make sure that your Marines are here or behind this bunker are so that they don't get beaten to death and eaten by those Zerglings. Alright. All right, so the bonus objective for this is rescuing three different groups of rebels. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. The smart way is to bait out those attacks and then lure the Hydra into the bunker so that it gets mauled. Uh, we might get hit by the attack wave, we might not. Zerger melee, which is why you saw me backing off and then shooting while I was backing off. Oh no, no. Oh Jesus. Yeah, that bunker's toast. SCVs, no! What are you doing? You fool! Okay, the aircraft attack happened a lot faster than it normally does, from what I remember. Let the Marines back up that missile turret. Oh, there's more Zerglings breaking apart the buildings around town. Lovely. Yeah, you can usually get a lone guy out there. The problem with doing that is that he tends to get killed. I'm screwing up my macro here, too, because I need to be building up... Or, I'm screwing up my resource intake, too, because I need to be... I need to be building up resources so that I can get my upgrades and not get trashed. So what I like to do in order to deal with this mission, uh, this is not a particularly difficult mission, it's really not, but I like to stagger bunkers behind each other. Let's gun down these zerglings here. While they're attacking the bunker, we can rip them to pieces here. That Hydra just got trashed. Now, the other problem with running a lone operative out to that point is that the lone operative doesn't tend to make it back. Okay, I need supply depots. Oh, nope. Oh, wow, they killed all of my guys. Damn, really? Jesus. Okay. Oh my god! Jesus. There's so many more here than usual. <laughs> I 
I'm also just kind of not moving around as fast as I probably should be. Okay, I need to get another SCV down here and build some more of these because holy crap, I'm getting destroyed. Yeah, somebody's going to be buttering your freaking biscuit here in a second, dude. The hell? Uh, oh, I think I know what that was. I'm trying to look at chat and do this all at the same time, and it's not working out very well for me. Oh, they're getting a lot more reinforcements here. If I could stop fumbling the frickin' buttons I need to be hitting. Yeah, I'm trying not to focus too much on, on chat right now, because I, I really can't. See, staggering these bunkers really does help, though, with the DPS. Oh, Jesus. Get back, get back. Medics, why did you go out in front, you fools? God damn it. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, everybody. If you if you say something, I will get to you when I am not in the middle of, of my ongoing I-need-to-live saga. Yeah, there we go. See, they're getting shredded. But I actually also have to add extra SCVs in order to get everything done. Okay, there's one more group out there that I need to go and pick up, and I don't know if I can get them with what I've got here. Largely because I don't have any upgrades. But I'm gonna do something to try. There we go. Okay, um, medics... Please, no. Oh my god. Oh, it's Mutalisks. Okay. Medics, I really I applaud your enthusiasm, but I kind of need you in the back here. Those Hydras do a ton of damage, but they're actually kind of fragile on this. Well, I rescued all three of them, but it ultimately cost them their lives. <laughs> that was actually really bad. Jesus. Oh, I feel bad about that one. Oh, wow. Okay, let's get some additional SCVs out there. I think I'm going to tune it up into groups of uh, three, maybe. And then just train a whole bunch more. I am not a master of this franchise, nor am I a legend. So please uh, forgive my somewhat cumbersome gameplay. That's what I like to see. You want to research weapons before you research armor. I'm going to kill this because it annoys me. Its very existence bothers me. Excellent. Uh, the other reason you want weapons upgrades before armor is because your troops are mostly going to be inside of buildings. You want them inside those buildings? 
I will not be able to show off the weird Easter egg that's hidden in this mission, largely because I haven't been playing well enough to make it happen. Um, I very much apologize for that. I'm used to playing this on faster speed, but apparently I, because I haven't played this in a, in a, in a Coon's age, I'm doing very poorly. Oh my god, hello. Hi. That's a lot of freaking Zerglings. Can you fuck off in seven different directions, please? Good lord, the other the other outpost didn't even lose a bunker. What the hell happened here? Will you stop rebuilding that creep tumor? Rude. Uh. No, I've never beaten Monster Hunter World, unfortunately. Um, I tried to play through Monster Hunter World, and I just wasn't that into it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what happens when you get butchered. Is that a creep tumor? Yes, it is. Shit. Okay, there we go. That that worked a lot better. There's gunfire everywhere, Jesus. Okay, we've got our armor upgrade. We're kind of running out of resources here. No rush! <laughs> Once you get yourself established, it's pretty hard for them to get you out of it. You may have noticed. Oh, god damn it. I guess I should have built a couple of missile turrets here. SCV, no! No! Do not go out there! It's not worth your life! God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> Why are my SCVs so stupid? <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, that's a lot of freaking Zerg. Yeah, no shit. I'd be grateful. I didn't even get close to this. Yeah, for anybody wondering, I am actually bad enough that that's the thing. I mean, I rescued all the rebels, even though they all died. <laughs> Even though they all died. <laughs> Alright. Tech Marceau. 
Back to finish the job. Telling what the Zerg will throw against us this time. Sir, we need to make sure our hardware and munitions are up to the challenge. Yeah, I'll check in with Swan down the armory. Knowing him, he's already got upgrades for us. I hate to ask, <coughs> sir, but is there a reason that convict's still on my bridge? <laughs> Tigers is one of my oldest friends. He helped me out of a real bind a few years back. <coughs> <laughs> Somehow, Rainer, knowing him as well as I know you, I doubt that. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to blow my nose, and then I'm going to show you guys around the Hyper Hyperion, or at least what the game has allowed us to see. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and let you guys pause that if you want to see what those can do, and I'll be back in just a moment.
sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I am back. <clears throat> Had to get myself some food and drink. I didn't want to spend the entire stream coughing my guts out. And I don't think anybody wanted to listen to that either. Oh, jeez. Why is my soda so shook up? Hmm. Weird. I didn't actually shake it that much at all, bringing it over here. There we go. My delicious little glass. One of my favorite sodas. Okay. So mission archives will allow us to go back and play missions on different difficulties. Collect any rewards we didn't get before. One hell of a ship you got here, Jimmy. <clears throat> How'd you get a hold of a floating palace like this? The Hyperion was Fink's flagship back in the day. He and Pat decided to borrow her when he parted company with her. This old baby seems to be some tight spots. Speaking of tight spots, Titus, why are you still wearing that suit on my bridge? <laughs> oh, will we hear about those deaths later? Sup, Swan? Screw you too, Swan. Upgrading what we got is all good. <laughs> but when are we getting new hardware? A lot of gaps in our inventory right now. Sometimes we take a job with some kind of new hardware, and I get a schematic for it so we can make more of them. The plans for other stuff, we gotta either beg, borrow, or steal. So I don't want to make this a rule, but I am gonna have to, at least until I'm able to handle um running a mission and looking at chat on occasion to answer questions. Um, I will have to answer and handle all questions between missions. Just largely for the sake of my own sanity. So this is the armory. Uh, you select the tech console and it grants you various pieces of technology that you can purchase and upgrade. Uh, we're going to take advanced medic facilities. Medics no longer require the tech lab add-on. And then, you might think it's a bad purchase, but the projectile accelerator can actually be a good one. But we're not going to get that until we can save up for Neil Steel Bunker. <sighs> uh, as far as the marine upgrades go, combat shields is the one I always go for. You can purchase both sets of upgrades. 
I just very rarely get stim packs because I don't really care much for the upgrade. Um, stim packs damages your units, and in return they fire 50% faster and move 50% faster for 15 seconds. That sounds like a lot, and it is, but I don't like hurting my own units right before I have to start a firefight. So the way this works is, as we progress through the game, we'll unlock different strains of missions. Missions where you gather artifacts progress the main story. Missions where you don't are technically side missions, but they will unlock more stuff for your tech tree, and in the case of Agria, they're also going to get us some extra research that we can use for various unique and fun upgrades. If the game starts to get too hard for me, I will turn it down to normal, largely for the sake of getting through... Because I know I can trash this game on normal, and it's not really that difficult. Um, hard mode actually makes the AI uh, <coughs> behave and function. Normal, the AI is actually, mo for the most part, fairly passive. It won't really do anything until specific story mission cues trigger it to do things as a rule. Okay, so the fire bat. Uh, the fire bat sucks, but it does actually have a purpose in the mission we're about to do. And that is that it is a very big and durable unit Thank you for so infantry. Much. I don't know what you expected from a hive mind alien race that hyper mutates, evolves virulently, infects other things with its mutative DNA, <coughs> and consumes all the biomass it can conceivably get. But if you expected sunshine and bunnies, um, newsflash, lady, no. So there is actually a hidden resource cache up here that I found, and this is something that I found more recently. So if you want to start with a little bit more Vespine and a little bit more minerals, you can do that here. <clears throat> like I said, it was one of my more recent discoveries, though. I was not about to let my medics walk headfirst into that in front of the fire bats. So as you can see, the fire bats have a lot of health. They've got a point of armor. Honestly, I feel like they need two points of armor. The overall damage capacity they have is not terrible, but it's not great. In this game, they're actually just very bad units. And I hate them because they have a very weak AoE... And their overall combat profile is badly outclassed by a bunch of other units. The only worthwhile reason for training these guys is because they have a shitload of health, so they can tank a lot of shots compared to a marine before going down. <clears throat> and because they have a base point of armor, they're actually capable of doing something before they die.
Now, the problem that I have with this mission is about four or five fold. Number one, you need a lot of gas if you're going to start training a lot of these fire baths. <clears throat> Number two, you need a lot of marines if you're going to be able to repel the enemy's aerial attacks and if you're going to supplement the damage of these guys. Number four, you start out with three SCVs and the game is not going to move very slowly. <clears throat> it's going to force you to have to deal with a lot of these problems. These things are going to demand escort as they go and that's not going to slow down. <clears throat> and there's only so much of that that you can really tolerate. Because you just don't have a ton of income. Largely because you don't have a lot of SCVs to start the game with. And you also noticed I had to build a couple of supply depots because I didn't really have any supply either. <clears throat> so this mission really shafts you on what you get to start out with as far as your base tech level is concerned. And it doesn't really change that. Uh, and it doesn't really change the demands and facts of the level that you have to protect this APC and the people inside and see to it that they get from one end of the map to the other without dying. But that's kind of hard to do when you have to try and train troops and train, you know, elites. <clears throat> I'm going to immediately salvage this bunker. Uh, I will revisit that bunker later. Get an extra fire bat. But the long and short of why this mission sucks is there's a lot of demand that's thrown at you and you don't really have a ton of ways to resolve that demand at the start. At least not right away. <clears throat> Once they make it up there, they're basically done. This is a Zerg Chrysalis. There's three in the level. Uh, you need them in order to be able to acquire all of your research points for your bonus objective. As the level progresses, I will try to show you guys where they all are. I am hoping the troops that I have over here are enough to take this next area without dying. There's a second one right here. Yeah, thanks to these fire bats, I have the, uh, I have the durability to get that one too. We're gonna go ahead and immediately pull our forces back here. We're gonna try and train a few more marines, get a few more SCVs. Our weapons upgrade has been researched. You want three more bunkers out here because you are going to need the uh, troop production, if you want a sizable army for this. <clears throat> I don't really need this much gas at this point. And if I was being particularly smart with my resources, I would probably be moving those guys over to minerals. But I don't really need it at this point. We're going to get our armor upgrade here in about 40 seconds. <clears throat> okay. Construct a reactor for this one. Now, I you may have noticed that I salvaged the two bunkers that uh, the game hands you. That's because I had no real way of making use of them at the time. And I wasn't about to 
try and defend an area that I absolutely was not going to be able to defend because I just didn't have the soldiers. We want to try and get these guys either ahead of or up against the convoy vehicle. As you can see, Firebats can be very, very good at holding the line. The main reason I have them at all is because of how durable they are. Okay, we're going to move all of our troops over here real quick. And they have made it away. Get another reactor and put a tech lab on that in case I want to build more fire bats. <clears throat> so at this point, you just try to build up as many troops as you could conceivably build up. And then we're going to head down here because the last bonus objective is actually over here. <clears throat> and you want to try and get these bonus objectives between... Escorts. You do not want to get them while you're escorting one of those uh, state, one of those APCs. Because if you try to get them during an APC escort, you're gonna have a bad time. Don't worry, I will. The doctor is in. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Good job. Bad news. What's going on? This better be good. SCV ready. Ten way. Coming through. Why not? The doctor is in. All right. So you noticed I'm bringing some SCVs along. That's not actually to repair the convoy APC if it takes damage. I'm bringing the SCVs along so I can do this. Just detected Zerg organisms entering the upper atmosphere. I can't give you an exact fix, but they're heading your way. We have another convoy ready to be escorted, Commander.
<clears throat> so these bunker emplacements exist largely to be able to try and deter the Zerg uh, advance attack party. We're going to try and hold them off using these bunkers. The bunker idea is not bad. The problem that I had with it is that when the game gave me the opportunity, I was not actually able to man any of those bunkers. I just didn't have the economy or the troops to do it. No, they haven't. Shut up. For anybody wondering, these areas here, uh, there are massive Zerg bases there. You can attack them. There's just not really a reason to do it. You'll notice I've kind of turned this mission into a snooze fest, though, by doing this. Sir, I'm picking up seismic disturbances closing in on your position. I think it's some kind of tunnel, sir. Wonderful. It's just like You'll notice I've basically burned through all of our economy, too, by the way. Thankfully, I've only got one convoy of people to worry about. There's a lot of freaking creep tumors around here. <clears throat> Don't like them. I guess you will find out. I built this bunker over here specifically to target that. I may or may not be metagaming, and I have no shame. <laughs> Probably should, but I don't. There we go, that gets rid of him. Oh, hi. Could you, like, not kill those civilian Marines? Ah, oh, fuck it. Ha, 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 ha. 
I guarded the road too well. Clear. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the evacuation done on hard mode. Uh. Excuse me. Now we go to the cantina, which is another area. News by now, Looks like you're back in business. That I am, Mr. Hill. If I'm observing the Union all at once, it's going to take its toll on my standing forces. Got any guns for hot? We well, you know the invasion makes it a seller's market right now. Still, your bartender there makes a hell of a my tie. So, sure, I've got some mercenary contracts you might be interested in. They're all hard. <laughs> I like Mr. Hill. So, this is your mercenaries contract liaison. That's basically what this guy exists to do, is sell you mercenary groups. Mercenary groups are basically upgraded versions of your soldiers that aren't quite heroes, but aren't quite average troops. For instance, the war pigs, we come for free, have 65% more health than usual, and deal 35% more damage than usual. On your standard marine. You can get three squads a mission. And you get four elite marines for every one you call down. These are the devil dogs with 60% more HP and 25% more damage. The devil dogs, I... They're actually a good mercenary unit. They're almost what I feel like the... Uh, God. They're almost what I feel like the firebat should be. Because without the Firebat's extended range, it's just not a very good unit. But I'm not going to hire them just yet. You meet Dr. Hansen yet? Show here. I asked that sweet thing if you'd like to keep me up physical. No harm in asking, right? I think she's got her eye on some handsy ass, though. Yeah. Who might that be? Excuse me. No, probably couldn't. Johnny Vermillion, UNA. We've got Kate Lockwell on remote feed from Agria, a fringe colony. Are you there, Kate? Okay, we seem to be having a sound problem with... I'm being told Emperor Manx is going to address us directly. Let's take you to his announcement already in progress. My finest and military minds are being brought to bear, and it's my pleasure to announce Just as the Zerg reappear. Coincidence? You 
I hate that guy so much. Trophies like that will appear up here depending on what missions you've completed in the game. <laughs> He's not wrong, that's the sad part. <clears throat> so we can get these guys juggernaut plating, which will get them plus two to their armor and actually make them a half-decent tank. As opposed to just being a basic bitch tank. Or we can get them incinerator gauntlets, which gives them 40% more AoE. Which actually makes them good. Uh, in terms of being an offensive unit. But I'm probably not going to worry about that. I'm going to get stabilizer med packs. So that my medics heal targets 25% faster. And use 33% less energy per level. So we now have Meinhof to go to for the colonists. And then we also have access to Redstone 3. So I've got time for just one more mission today. I'm going to do Rise of the Ronin as a stream tomorrow. And then after that, I will alternate between this and Rise of the Ronin until I have finished one of the two and then try to taper it off afterwards. Uh, the one that I haven't finished. Once I complete these two, I'm probably going to try to do a series of Remnant 2 streams. Just mostly to show off a way to get through the game. It's going to be done on survivor difficulty. Uh, there's a ton of walkthroughs out there for the hardest difficulty and for virtually every secret you could want. But I thought I'd throw my own hat in there and see if I could just make something that's a bit more casual and a bit less hyper-focused, but is also still entertaining enough that people will enjoy it and maybe throw me some tips if they see some flaws in what I'm doing. Hopefully not being too cruel. Uh, I, I don't want to be one of those ultra-serious uh, streamers. I want people to be able to have a good time. So if we do Redstone, we're going to get the Reaper. If we do Meinhof, we're going to get the Hellion. The Hellion is a virtually useless addition to the Terran arsenal. I honestly don't know why the damn thing even exists. <sighs> you could argue that it's supposed to be a scout unit, but honestly, the Reaper does a much better job of that. And is arguably better because it can actually kill infantry really fast. But Reapers are also more fragile and die more easily. 
However, Reapers can jump up and down cliffs, which gives them uh, terrain advantages. No shit. Of all the insanity that Rainer puts up with and, and happily jumps into, I feel like this is a little bit excessive for him. And I've played these games. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Let's get a tech lab. So rich minerals give seven minerals per SCV uh, load instead of, instead of the usual five. Rich mineral fields are very nice. We now have access to mercenaries. This Merc compound is a unique structure. They have timer cooldowns. So if you're going for maximum time efficiency and speed runs. Already done, Rainer. Chill, brother. All right, so you want to create a bunker and get some troops up here as fast as possible because you will get attacked by the Zerg from the north. <clears throat> the Zerg are actually all over this this map. I'm glad you like them, Swan. Because we won't be seeing very much of these guys. They're only actually useful in one or two missions. You notice how quickly those guys basically just died? So if you come up here early, Tosh will be glad that you found his boys. Uh, he's got a number of boys that are lost out here. Most of them are Reapers. And he kind of wants you to help him find them. And the best part about these guys is they find a lot of mineral packs lying around here that you can just sort of pick up. <clears throat> I'm going to pull these boys back to base. Okay, get the uh, things in here. And then you kind of want to build a bunker down here. Um, I'm going to build a couple of medics. The Brutalisk is an extremely rare and very powerful, dangerous Zerg creature. Use caution when approaching one. Uh, by caution, it means don't be don't be stupid. Just try not to attack that thing. 
Oh my, hi. Uh, alright. Thankfully, these guys have ridiculously strong Gauss pistols uh, against light infantry, uh, or light enemy unit types, anyway. Oh, shit. Lift. Um, Thank you. Oh god. Uh well I hope your back doesn't hurt as bad as mine has been. Just a reminder, sir. The more minerals we expend on forces, the longer it's gonna take to reach our goal. Try to be economical. Please stop reminding me. I already know, Matt. I'm very aware of it. Uh him reminding me of that is actually going to be very redundant here in just a second anyway. Just to get rid of these little frickin' buggers. Mineral field depleted. Mineral field depleted. Yeah, they're almost done eating away the minerals here. Oh yeah, they're they're almost done with that. Come over here and start grabbing. Uh, you will notice that I did train a couple of medics, and I'm going to train a few more. I also trained a few war pigs, you'll see. I'm going to be training more war pigs than that. See, these guys kill things, like, ultra quick. Now, before I piss off that Brutalisk, I'm going to construct an engineering bay. You really don't need a ton of Vespine gas for this mission. It's, it's really not necessary. So, you won't see me get much. Go away. Go away. There we go. Okay, so I'm about to tick off this Brutalisk here. Just want to make sure that I don't misclick on one of those while I'm trying to go after this thing. So, the fun fact about the Brutalisk is that he has a very hard time attacking fast enough to be able to hit these guys. This is why I stopped attacking him, because uh, he will regenerate some of that damage, as you can see. It's not that fast, the regeneration rate. But I want to be able to run away from him if I can. These guys can kill him, but as you can see, it takes a while. But his attack animations are so slow, you can cancel out your uh, his attack animations simply by running away, and then he loses the ability to attack them. And when his AI forces him to go all the way back to where he belongs, he's getting shot to crap, and then there he goes. 
So, Brutalisks are extremely powerful, and they are very, very, very dangerous threats. You do not ever want to underestimate a Brutalisk. You don't. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. However, Brutalisks have a real hard time moving. And because they have a real hard time moving, they have a real hard time being a legitimate threat. I am really angry that I just lost one of my Warpigs. And one of my medics. Actually, I think I just lost two medics. I am angry. No, 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 no. I wanted the command center to come over here and land so that I can mine minerals. Alright, go grab those resources, boys. Hop up here. Get these three to hop back up here. I don't know why he jumped off like a moron. There we go. So what makes these guys so flippin' dangerous in the campaign is that they will blow up every building they come across with a high-powered detonation charge. And they will repeatedly throw those charges and just decimate buildings. The problem that you are noticing with Reapers is that they have all the durability of a piece of paper. Oh, 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 okay. I was afraid they were dead because I was leaving them alone to their own devices for about 10 seconds. For anybody wondering, yes, sometimes that can be about all you need to uh, leave them alone for and they will die. Okay. How much does this have left? Oh, wow. Oh, God. Nope. Nope. Oh, yeah, they're dead. They're fucking dead. <laughs> well, I got my Reapers killed. I'm not a certain kind of stupid. I don't know what you're talking about. Excellent. What's going on? Yep. Bad news. All right, I'm going to build another bunker here just to have the defense. Oh, jeez. Wow, okay, that, that's a lot of... Okay. Mineral field depleted. 
There we go. <sighs> One mutilisk against all those marines. Yeah. If you're wondering why I haven't grabbed any gas, it's because I don't need any gas geysers this mission. Uh, oh, um... Let's get the SCVs the hell out of there, like, now. Lift up that command center before it gets blown to bits. No, 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 I, I'm totally in agreement here. Evacuate that low ground. <laughs> the last thing I want is to watch my SCVs get barbecued, least of all on the internet. Okay, let's get the SCVs and get the mining. And I think I have enough Reapers here to start getting into some fights again. God, really? Alright, it looks like we're harvesting through this pretty quickly. Should be done before the next lava surge. Thank you, war pigs. You are men among men. Truly men among men. The reason I got those war pigs actually was because of the enemy flyers in this mission. That's another area I could mine out if I really wanted to. I'm not really sure I want to mine out resources at the moment because I really want to start getting rid of a lot more of these Zerg. Okay. Oh, Jesus. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to carry the war pigs with these guys from now on. Because the mutalisks are now defending the remaining Zerg bases, and I need something to clean them out. And those upgraded guns are exactly what I need. You see how easily these guys die? This is why Reapers actually suck for virtually anything other than raiding bases for a minimum amount of time. Because their durability is so bad that even with medics, sometimes they'll die before you can save them. There we go. Clean out all of the Zerg. The other thing that makes these guys really worthwhile, the war pigs, is that they're basically supermarines, so they're hitting pretty damn hard, and they're tanking pretty well compared to what a marine could tank. And when you couple that with these powerful raiders, the raiders can take on anything that's on the ground while these guys deal with anything that's in the air and then supplement their ground attacks. As for why I don't buy, uh, pick up Vespine geysers, there's so much gas available to me that I don't really need to. <laughs> yeah, they tried to send an attack wave, but I'm doing so much damage to their infrastructure. And those two bases are well enough defended that what he sent wasn't enough. There we go. Nope, 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 nope. I'm not going down there. There's one last Zerg base up here. And the main reason I'm being so aggressive about tackling the Zerg is because if you're getting harassed while you're trying to mine all these resources out, you're not going to be able to survive too well. See, and now we've, we've hit that magical critical mass of Reapers. The Reapers are just kind of slaughtering their way through. But you'll notice I still lost three or four of them. Just busting the door open. That's, that's pretty bad. That really speaks to how weak the unit's durability capabilities are. Again, I get that it's supposed to be a raider, but this thing costs 50 gas and 50 minerals. A marine costs 50 minerals, can attack air and ground units, and when supported by medics, is actually much harder to kill. And in large groups like this, at effectively half the resource cost, it decimates things. Yes, I am. Maybe we do. <sighs> All right. <sighs> Excuse me. Ah. 
So we've unlocked access to the laboratory, and this is the one thing I wanted to be able to show off before I ended up uh, ending the stream today. Uh, because I'm going to be going through the research projects as we get access to them. <laughs> Just try not to blow up the ship, okay, Stetman? Just out of curiosity, I did some tests on the minerals from Redstone. I thought you should know I found trace quantities of Jorium, a rare crystal with very unique properties. I'm all ears, Doc. What kind of properties? Jorium resonates at the same frequency as certain brain waves. It's been theorized that it could be used to stimulate brain activity or even produce psionic abilities in human subjects. What the hell does Tosh want that for? That's a good question. This is your Zerg specimen. Um, you will be able to see every five Zerg samples, how this thing evolves and grows and what it teaches you. So here is the research panel. Every five points of Protoss or Zerg research, you will unlock access to another power-up or upgrade that you can use. The first upgrades that we have access to are Shrike turrets. These Shrike turrets basically outfit all bunkers with automated turrets. These turrets hit air and ground units, so they don't discriminate between a target based upon whether or not it flies. They allow unmanned bunkers to contribute to a base's defense, albeit not particularly well. And they basically just make a bunker more lethal in terms of offensive protection. Then there's Fortified Bunker. Uh, essentially, the idea is, is you just slap a large amount of hardened carapace onto a bunker and somehow the bunker gets way more durable. Uh... Literally, the, um, the, what this does is it gives the bunker much more durability. Honestly, you might be, be tempted to think that Shrike turrets are good. The better upgrade is Fortified Bunker, because if you get Neil Steel Bunker plus this, you have six guns inside mowing down whatever comes at them. These upgrades are mutually exclusive in terms of research, so if you pick one, you can't get the other. That's going to be the same for all of these as we go. I'm not going to get into all of them all at once now. I'm just going to talk about each individual pair of upgrades as we get to those thresholds because I don't want to overwhelm anybody with uh, too much information. I want this to be information that you can use. And I, I also want to make sure that as we progress, it's going to be relevant to you because of what you should have if you're playing as well as I am. And I'm not even saying that I'm playing particularly well. Actually, I feel like I'm playing kind of like ass compared to a pro. But I'm playing well enough so far to get through just fine. Can you tell me anything about this artifact? I admit, it weirds me out. I've done some preliminary studies. Your artifact is a few thousand years old, but that makes it pretty young in xenoarchaeological terms. Most alien artifacts are millions. I've ever seen. If they didn't make it, who did? Try the ones who made the Protoss. Me. 
Jim doesn't like him any more than a lot of people do. And he shouldn't. Uh, Tosh is an assassin. And the number one rule about assassins is don't trust them. So uh, we now have enough currency to get another upgrade. I want Neo Steel Bunker right away. And combat shields. I thought I'd talk about U-238 rounds and G-4 cluster bombs. G-4 cluster bombs are not very good. These, as you just see right here, they take a little bit to go off. Uh, their AOE is pretty small. And these guys don't have the durability. And if those enemies had the intelligence to give chase, they would have, they would have not died. Or they would have taken fewer losses. U-238 shells increases their range and allows them to deal extra damage to light armor. <sighs> this doesn't really make them that much better at shit that they already do. It really doesn't. And in the end of all things, uh, this is not a unit I will be using much, so it is not a unit I will be investing in. When we get the opportunity, we're going to get projectile accelerator because we're going to need that. But the primary reason that I picked up the Reaper is because it's actually really useful for the next mission I want to do. But I'm afraid my stream time is over. Uh, and that is going to be it for today. Um, thank you all very much for watching. I have been Dusk of the Savage Hounds. And I will see you guys later.